This is Shit Audio's new Valley 2 Plus tube headphone amplifier. So why would you bother getting a tube headphone amplifier? Well, let's talk about it. get asked by people who are interested in buying a new tube amp what they should get especially people who are just starting out and they want something simple and and basic they can try out as a tube amp and see if they like it or not so often i recommended shit audio's valley 2 headphone amp for that because it's a simple straightforward amp it takes only one tube so there are no issues with tube matching to worry about and the tubes that are available uh, well, there are many and varied, and you can use just plug and play. But however, Shit Audio has just come out with the Valley 2 Plus, which is an upgraded version of the original Valley 2. And well, apart from, say, the different hole pattern in the top cover, what's different about these two amps? And, you know, why would you buy a tube amp in the first place? So I'm going to take you through some technology about how tube amps work, you know, what they do and what they don't do, and how this little Valley 2 Plus compares to, say, buying just a regular amp like the Magni 3 Plus or Magni 3 Heresy here. Some other tube amps like the Cavalli Tube Hybrid, the more expensive Shield audio, audio amps like the Valhalla 2 and the Lear 3. And we're going to give you my impressions of how it sounds listening with headphones and the Valley 2 Plus. So to start with, let's get a little bit of an overview of what tube amps are. So more or less when you have some kind of amplifier, whether it be a headphone amp or a speaker amp, there are usually multiple gain stages. The main two types of gain employed in amplifiers in general are voltage gain and current gain. So tubes are good at the first, voltage gain, which is why you often see them in amps, and they're used to, well, basically increase the voltage. Solid state circuits are good at current gain. Now, in the very most basic kind of tube amp in the headphone world is called an output transformerless amp, and that's what the Valhalla 2 is. And that means that the tubes are used to increase the voltage, but there's nothing there to increase the current. Now, if you have headphones, headphones you may already be aware have an impedance. So for example, these Sennheiser HD6XX headphones or the HD650s, which they're based on, have a high impedance, so about 300 ohms or even higher depending on the frequency. So these are, you think, well, people tend to say, oh, those are difficult to drive because the number is high. Well, impedance, if you can think of like blowing air through a tube, if that tube is a straw, it has high impedance. So if you wanted to blow a ball bearing through the tube, a very short, sharp breath would blow the ball bearing through the straw and it would come out very quickly. So you can think of voltage swing as being like, you know, short and sharp movements of, of electricity. For example, like if you get, you can get an, a, a static shock of millions of volts, but because, and it won't kill you because it only has a very small current. Now, low impedance, you might think of, well, what if you had to blow, blow a ball bearing through a garden hose? Well, that's got a lower impedance. The larger the tube, the lower the impedance, but the more air would be required to blow something through there. So you can think of current as like, well, literally, it's literal power. So the thing is, while these things can, the output transformless amps can output a lot of fast voltage swing, they don't have a lot of current, say, for low impedance headphones, such as these Hi-Fi-Man Sundara planers. So that, but in this, they don't perform very well. And I've made a couple of videos about this, and you can check out one of them, which I'll put a link to up in the corner. The second type of amp, which I don't have one here for an example, is called a transformer coupled amp. And this basically takes your output transformless amp and adds a couple of transformers to change some of that voltage into current and lower the output impedance. And this is often used with tube amps for speakers so that they can have a suitably low output impedance for speakers, which are you know somewhere around four to eight ohms very often, and which is very low impedance, but requires a lot of current and actually a fair bit of voltage swing as well. So the third kind, which is what we're gonna be talking about today is called the hybrid amp. And well, you remember I said that amplifiers have multiple gain stages? Well, normally in say a headphone amp, you might have a amplifier circuit or an op amp which is used for voltage gain and another one used for current gain will replace the first one with a tube and you have something like the Valley 2 Plus. This is a hybrid amp like the Lear 3 and it uses both uses tubes for, for voltage gain and a solid state circuit for current gain and to ensure you have a suitably low output impedance good for driving all kinds of headphones. So while things like the Valhalla 2 have an advantage with high impedance headphones because they don't have to have an extra circuits or transformers or whatever Hybrid tube amps are very good as all-round headphones. 
Now, the interesting thing you probably notice is that the Valley 2 Plus is much smaller than something like a Lear 3 or a Valhalla 2. And what's the difference there is that inside the right hand, the well, the left hand side from your point of view of these amps are transformers. In the case of these small amps, of course, the transformers are in a wall wart. Now, let's take a look at actually the amp itself. We have a volume control on the front and a 6.3 millimeter or quarter inch socket as usual. But on the back, what do we have? We have our inputs on the left here and then a gain switch so you can actually have high or low gain i'll talk about that in a bit so if you're driving say uh, sensitive headphones you might use low gain if you're anything a little bit more power hungry you have high gain at the expense of maybe increased noise which i'll talk about when i go talk about my impressions and then you have actually preamp output here as well so you can use it as a kind of volume control for something like active speakers although the performance is kind of fairly basic and you also have your good old power switch and you'll see that the input here has unlike your normal kind of in input plug that you get on the back of these small amps you actually have a four pin din socket for input and that's because tubes have a heater in them so in this case we have a six volt heater now you notice the tube types for this kind of amp all very often start with the number six and that's because it's this, a six volt heater tube and there's also 12 12 volt heater tubes so the wall wart conveniently has four pins and it has two voltage outputs one six volt output specifically for the heater and another 24 volt output for the amplification circuit so that is why it's very compact because the main chunky part of the amplifier is in an external device so that being the valley 2 and that being a quick overview of tube amps so as a tube amp it has some advantages and disadvantages which become sonically audible for example, you can remove the tube and change it with another one. And being part of the amplification circuit, different types of tubes will have a slightly different you know, sound properties for them, maybe slightly different crosstalk, slightly different harmonics, that kind of thing. You can often buy little, you know, you can buy cheap tubes or even very expensive tubes like this Amperex PQ, which I've been using in various amps that I have around here, such as the uh, Mastrop CTH and the original Valley 2. Now, talking of tubes, the interesting thing compared to the original Valley 2, the original Valley 2 came with this Canadian tube. The thing about um, manufacturers is they have to be able to find parts that they can buy in a large quantity to make a sufficient number of amps. If you buy some like super obscure tube, you might only be able to buy half a dozen, and then, well, you can only sell half a dozen amps, or else you just sell amps with whatever random tubes you have on hand which doesn't really work very well as you kind of have a very mixed and match results with with customers so they went for a they go for whatever they can buy in bulk but is still good quality one of the basic options say that came with the cavalli tube hybrid was this new electro harmonic 6sn7 tube which is kind of a really basic and really crappy tube and but they with the valley 2 they had this canadian tube which was kind of basic as well and once you bought the amp upgrading it quickly was good in this case, they have bought, a, I guess, a large batch of these General Electric tubes. Now, General Electric new old stock tubes are kind of the, the regular kind of tube you can get hold of. The one that's in here has markings that say 6BQ7A. Now, this is actually a pretty decent tube. It's definitely an upgrade from the tube that they sent with the Valley 2 when I got one. And as a stock tube, it actually is really good. It's not one that you have to go, oh, I'm just going to chuck that and buy a new one. They sell, f I've seen around from the kind of online tube stores at around $20 a pop, which is actually pretty reasonable. So it comes with a decent tube. But because it, the, you know, the tubes alone probably cost maybe $20 or something like that, I don't know how much it costs for shit audio. The cost of this amp is a jump above the cost of something like a Magni 3 Plus or Magni 3 Heresy, where they've done as much as they can to get it down to $99. Some of the accessories, such as this fun, fan, fancy custom wall wart and uh, you know a uh, third-party tube, that's where probably a little bit more money went in there. So the price compared to these solid-state amps is a little bit higher, and that's where we get into the performance. Now it's interesting. The Valley Two, which if you saw my review, I considered it a little bit like it's like when you've had a couple of drinks and you're a little bit tipsy. You know that experience. Well, that's how the sound is with the original Valley Two. It's kind of a little bit fun, a little bit kind of loose around the edges, but entertaining. And it makes a contrast from something like these very, you know, measurement dead flat, you know, excellent, you know, distortion, low distortion measurement, solid state amps, because it make it brings a little bit of entertainment to the sound. Now, people buy tube amps for various reasons. Some tube amps can be extremely fast. Some kind of have that kind of bloomy or warm flavor 
or they have some induced, you know, even autoharmonic distortion, which is very pleasant to listen with. There's some kind of color to the sound that makes them pleasant. And the Valley 2's pleasantness was through the, the it's slightly kind of looseness to the sound, a little bit of a kind of entertaining, you know, presentation, which made it more interesting to listen with than, say, most amps. The other thing is you could roll a few tubes around and get a little bit of a different flavor in there, such as I did with various tubes. I have a, uh, as I said, the Amperex PQ here. I actually have a 2C51, which I've also used in the Valley 2, which is in the uh, CTH at the moment. That tube had to, has to use an adapter because the pin out of the tube is different. Like the pins for the heater and the uh, the sound are, are different in this tube than are in the regular kind of 6922 type tube and, and, and variants. So in that you had a little bit of variety. Now with the Valley 2, things have tightened up a lot. So the amp sounds very kind of, very much more controlled, very much more even. And interestingly, when I level match them with a Magni 3 Plus, well, this amp was actually barely distinguishable from the Magni 3 Plus, even with a stock tube. Now, if you can consider that people do buy amp, you know, tube amps for a little bit of color and a little bit more kind of entertaining sound, off, you know, obviously sacrificing a little bit of, uh, you know, measurement perfection in there. They may not measure as well. I mean, technically, they can have a thousand times the distortion. And considering that, uh, you, know, just, you know, when we look at distortion graphs, they're logarithmic. The way we perceive sound and the way we kind of measure sound, you know, a thousand times distortion sounds terrible, but it's actually the fact that even if this measures a thousand times worse than one of these solid state amps, it's barely noticeable. Now, with $6,000 worth of equipment, that is a, a shit audio Yggdrasil, a, say Focal Utopias, that kind of thing, I could barely notice the difference with them level matched. Maybe if you want the fine details, I found the, the kind of the slight coloration of the Valley 2 a little bit more pleasant to listen with than these little amps. But like these little amps, well, you know, if you don't listen too loud and you turn the, you know, you're not listening too loud to the music, the sound was pretty good and actually very impressive how well these little amps, both the Tube Valley 2 Plus and the Magni 3 Plus and Magni Heresy, control headphones. But the difference between this kind of amp and something like a Lear 3 or even just an Asgard 2 or Jotunheim 2 is that they don't have this continuity circuit. Now, let's talk a little bit more about design because amps of this type are class AB. Now, initially, when you turn the volume up and a little bit of power coming out, you'll be, they'll be in class A. And then they slip into class AB, which is where they're only using kind of 50% of the power a lot of the time. Now, when they do that, so if you especially have dynamics in the music, you kind of things start to become a little bit blurry, whereas they don't on the higher end amps that have the continuity circuit that ensure even power delivery all through the power band. So this is when on more like on faster, kind of more complex music, you know, big orchestral, maybe some very fast jazz, you know, modern music, maybe things like Spongel. There's quite a variety out there, which is just, you know, the stuff where a lot is going on you start to notice that there's a little bit of a blur in the sound compared to the bigger amps such as the Lear 3 or one of the others that I've reviewed before. That's where you notice a kind of difference. And it's even noticeable, even though the, the sound quality with these, with different DACs, I have Shid Audio's Modi 3 Plus and the Modi Multibit here. Both of those, you know, they have a slightly different character as well. The uh, Modi 3 Plus has that kind of slightly harder edge of the cheaper AKM DAC chips. And the Modi Multibit has that kind of softer, a little bit more blurred, but a little nicer to listen to sound of a you know, very basic ladder DAC. This actually scaled up. I mean, I could notice the difference between jumping between these cheap DACs and even the Bifrost 2. Not that I'd recommend going out and buying a Bifrost 2 to use with the Valley 2, but you know, some people may. Even despite that, you know, I could hear more detail out of a better DAC. When music became more complex and you turn the volume up, especially with, you know, power hungry planers, that's when you started to notice that there was a difference in performance between these small amps and the bigger ones with the better circuit and the better bigger power supply that isn't just even a custom wall ward. So that was a kind of difference between these and, you know, the, the better amps. Compared to something like this Mass Drop Cavalli Tube Hybrid, which I really like, this has a maybe slightly sweeter sound with full-size headphones. A little bit more, even with the same tube in both of them, I like the Cavalli Tube Hybrid very slightly better in terms of sound. The problem with the Cavalli Tube Hybrid is the options available on it. You only have one input. You only have one gain level. If you plug IEMs into that, no go. There's way too much noise. This you can at least set into low gain mode and you can use it with in-ear monitors. You know, you could plug in, you know, a 6.3 to 3.5 millimeter adapter. 
And you can use it with in-ear monitors, but clearly the sound, the noise level is higher than with these little solid state amps. So if I was going for in-ear monitors, I would probably go for a solid state amp first because the tube circuit just simply is noisier. Now, some tubes like this Amperex PQ have a reputation for ringing like a bell when you plug stuff in. So as I have the headphones in and plug stuff in here, you go bing as, thing, as little components inside the tube vibrate. Not so much with some other, most other tubes. But distinctly, you know, if I, I also had, and I don't know if it's particularly me or if it's to do with the amp, when I did plug in-ear monitors into the Valley 2 Plus, I did hear some kind of like, I'd move the cable around and suddenly some noise would come in. And whether where that was in my system, given I have a whole rack of so many components and so much gear going on there, I'm not quite sure. But all the same, the amps that were dead quiet with in-ear monitors were the Magni 3 Plus and Magni Heresy. So in that you do get a bit of a disadvantage and again that higher noise floor does come back to bite you when you're using things like in-ear monitors but it is possible to do so. So this is where the issue is between something like a Valley 2 Plus and the solid state equivalents. Likewise between the Shit Audio Lear 3 and the Jotunheim 2 is that you're paying more money for well you can have a little bit of fun you can pull out tubes and roll them around for a little bit of sound flavor and a, a you know color adjustment but why would you spend that extra money when you can buy a magni 3 plus magni 3 Her heresy or in the case of the lear 3 when you can just buy jotunheim 2 which does have a little bit of color to the sound and make it a little bit more entertaining to listen with without all the hassle of a tube and you get balanced circuit in there as well an interesting discussion I had with someone on HeadFi was that when I reported that the Valley 2 Plus had kind of tightened up the sound compared to the Valley 2, that person who already owned the Valley 2 said, mm, well, maybe I won't upgrade. I like the colored sound of the Valley 2. You know, making it less colored, made it less interesting, not interested. And that's the thing. You're spending more money for something that is almost probably close to indistinguishable now from the solid state amps only to kind of spend more money on tubes or as some people have done with the Lear 3 and previously Lear 2 and Lear 1, spent more money on tubes than they did on the amp itself. I like the Valley 2 Plus. It's pretty good as a, you know, nice little headphone amp. If you do like that glowing tube, it does look really cool. Got a question for me? Want some advice? Well, consider becoming a one of my supporters and I'll happily give you as much advice as you need or as I'm able to do so about buying gear, which could save you way more than what I'm asking for you to help support me out. Help me, I'd love to help you out and have you join and become part of the community. So go to the link that you see on screen or in the description below. Also use all those names flashing by on screen. Those people are some of my supporters and thanks very much to all of them. It's the reason I can make these videos and the reason I can help people out and still continue doing this kind of thing is because of them and all of you watching out there. So thanks once again for watching and I'll see you online.